Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Make. Uh, today we're taking a look at the new Necromunda Dark Uprising box set from Games Workshop, um, which you can watch my unboxing and review of if you go up here in the cards. Uh, you can see me flip through the rules. Show you all the new cool stuff with the Corpse Grinder called, and generally waffle on um, about how horrifyingly dark the story for this game is. If you're into cannibalism and ritual murder, then uh, then this is the game for you. But we're gonna jump in and actually take a look at some of the new kits that come in here um, and bang them together so that you guys can see how they basically function. So that's a big part of this. Normally I would do like a full let's play for a two player share set, but this isn't really a new game. It's just a new faction uh, along with some new terrain kits and stuff. And I figured focusing on the models this time would actually give people a little bit more what they want. Um, and also Chris and I from uh, Way of the Brush are currently rounding off our first cycle for our Necromunda campaign. And this is like one of my favorite GDB games ever. I want to enjoy this. So I'm going to really take my time, paint the scenery nicely, enjoy paint. I'm not going to try and like whip through this in 24 hours. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to savor basically <laughs> this box set. Uh, but I figured the, the best thing for you guys would be to, to see the box. It would actually be to help me put it together and, um, kind of like, uh, hang out and, uh, and watch it get assembled. So, uh, the key, the, the model kits and the model kits, they're, they're fairly, they're fairly simple. Like they're, they're plug and play bodies and arms and stuff. And they're fairly modular as well. But the thing that people have been, I think the most curious about is the zone mortalis stuff. So, uh, if you don't know the history of the Zone Mortalis, it was originally a hard foam 3D like dungeon set, basically 40k dungeon set from Forge World. Um, and the Zone Mortalis was then done in cardboard 2D for the original Necromunda box set. And now finally in glorious 3D plastic, although there have been a ton of aftermarket producers, um, including my buddy Austin from Death Ray Designs, who've done great MDF kits to basically make the 2D tiles from the original Necromunda box 3D. And these are really similar in plastic. So what you're going to get is you're going to get some columns, um, which all of the train kind of attaches to, some door sections that actually lift in and out, and then finally some wall sections that will go along with it. So what we're going to start off with here um, is the columns. Clip these out. This will make two columns uh, and show you how this stuff gets put together. I accidentally sliced the giant hole in the instructions. I do love these little instruction guides though. Oh my gosh. Um, these are great. So uh, it's showing you that you can basically any of these B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9, B10 can be put together to make these columns. So just pick any four and get get going. Um, I got my GW clippers here, my, my super old, older than some of you watching GW hobby knife that I'm like quickly running out of blades for, but the blades for these are the best. They're surgical blades. They are so sharp. It's amazing. I've got... I'm not, I'm not saying this is my blood, but I'm, I'm also not, not saying this is my blood. Um, and then some Tamiya, Tamiya uh, plastic cement, which is the best plastic cement on the market. I will fight anyone that says different. Uh, the columns go to where really, really simply. You're basically just building the outsides and then the insides. Um, you do need two individual frames for this. The first one uh, is going to be the top frame. The second one's going to be the bottom piece. So this is the one that goes on top. You can not glue it if you want to make it come out. And the bottom frames are, which one, what number are they? They are number, they don't give you a number, B1, B2. Nope, no numbers there. They don't even give you a, an actual like thing for this. You can turn B1, B2 upside down, use the identities guides. Oh, I see. Okay, so what's telling you is don't glue this on. This is a separate piece. Uh, use it as a guide for gluing the walls together so that you have an easier time of doing it. But glue any four walls together to get started. Well, let's try that. That seems like a good place to start. So let's just get a pile of these bits out and then an accessory for them. And the accessories you can have basically afterwards, there's four different options, a terminal, a keg stand, <laughs> this is a beer keg, um, or two vents that can go onto the plasma conduits. Man, GW does love their like points of contact these days for stuff. And I do appreciate that because it does keep, <laughs> it's annoying to clip out, but it does mean that in, in shipping and packaging and stuff, these don't rattle around. I can remember many a part coming loose and just rattling around in a box when I was a kid and you'd find it broken or occasionally just missing. These supports are actually, while they are annoying to clip off 7 million of them, and sometimes there are like literally 7 million of them, they are keeping these big heavy chunks of plastic from breaking off in the box in transportation. And that has been a problem in the past. So while you have to bear with me clipping these out, at least this stuff is undamaged. And then it says clip out one of these to use as a guide to tell you how it's going to go. So while this is a pretty intimidating box of stuff, like when you watch my unboxing video, you're going to see that there's like, I think there's like 17 spurs of just terrain in here, 
what do I want to put on here? I'm going to do one of the, the conduit bits so they can link up to the, uh, the pipes. Because I want to do three different pieces here and then put them together so you can just kind of see how they interlink. Um, these suckers aren't going to get glued on because this is actually, it looks like the bottom piece in the instructions. It's just, it's actually the top piece. It's saying use it as a guide for making sure that stuff doesn't, um, doesn't fall apart. So let's have a look here. Clean off some mold lines. Always cut towards yourself, children, unless it's a dull knife. <laughs> if it's a super sharp knife, make sure you cut towards yourself. If it's a dull knife, go the other way. The other option is always use the back of the blade to scrape off your mold lines. Smart people will do that. I'm not very smart. I like to use the nice sharp knife. But if you want to be safe and watch me use best practices, I guess we could do it this way and use the back of your knife blade. Because actually, ironically, the back of your knife blade is just as sharp for scraping mold lines, but you won't accidentally go too deep and like carve something's face off. <laughs> so using the back of the using the back of the knife is a, a handy way to keep your thumb intact. Although my thumb is so many layers of like um, callus at this point from <laughs> and, and old scars from having cut it with hobby knives that I don't think it even bleeds anymore. I could cut a big chunk out of it and it would just sit there. All right, let's scrape all you off. And you've got four of these frames, which means eight of these columns for placing. And when they show you that, when I show you the back of this, basically how you set it up, they say place all the columns first and then fill in everything in between. Although the, the instructions in the book from, I might be wrong, but from a cursory glance, seem to just be the standards of Mortalis instructions from before. So there isn't a huge amount of like instruction on how to place the, the tiles using these new 3D tiles that I noticed. I could be wrong, there could be a whole section I didn't see in the new rulebook. But obviously, it's when, when you're reviewing a rulebook and you're reading it, it's, it's the first thing is hard to pick out is actually the differences, the subtle differences in text, because you start glazing over when you're reading stuff you already know, and then you miss basically the stuff that is small that's changed. You have to read it two or three times. I'm sure when Chris and I play a game and we reread the setup instructions, if it is, if it is different, or if you're just freestyling it, that's when we'll figure it out. But I gotta paint some enforcers and I gotta paint all this terrain first. So there we go. So that's all cleaned off. Let's get some model cement here. Let's bang this sucker together. And like it does say, it says put this upside down. It will help you to, to use these as guides basically for keeping all this stuff together. And there are some nice divots for putting this in. And then glue the edge. And it just says, just just wing it, just freestyle it. Any four of these should work. Yeah, I see what they're doing. They're letting you use these as guides, basically. And I'm just gonna put along the edge and keep going. And then I'm gonna let this dry for a second because you guys don't need to watch this dry. Watching glue dry is boring. Almost as boring as listening to me talk. So let's put that all together. Whoops, that's upside down. And give this two minutes to dry before I put, go and throw this on. Okay, so here they are all dried up. Now they don't want you to glue these tops on um, because you can place in the topper for a stairwell, um, other gubbins as well, and these are meant to basically stay off. Now the connection points are pretty good. They've got these this like tongue and groove thing they're doing, so they are pretty solid when they're done. The one thing I would recommend is don't put more gubbins on each side uh, than one, and you probably wanna leave at least one with nothing on the sides because these sit in between all the wall sections. So you're basically saying that this wall right here will never have um, a doorway or a wall connected to it, and it's always gonna have to be exposed. So don't go too crazy with the accessories, leave your tops off, and that's it, a pretty quick build. So let's jump into the next one. So next up we have some doors, uh, and they want us to build the small and medium doors. So I'm just gonna do a, like one of each here basically. Um, and it looks like the actual connectors for the doorways are all the same. It says here, just number wise, G9, 10, 11, 12 are all the same, and G13, 14, 15, and 16 are all the same. And then it's what you put in between them. Is it a small piece or a large piece um, to connect them? There's also a little terminal you can use for locking doors. You can see the terminal bits are here on the frame. Um, so I'm just gonna do a small one and a large one so we can get a look at what this looks like. And it looks like you're gonna get four doors total, two large, two small, um, on this one frame. And I believe this is the only door frame in here, so that's it as far as stuff that can open and close in the zone mortalis set so there's two sides and this is pretty tight for the clippers too this is what makes this box so heavy these are solid like that large door is a solid chunk of plastic it is fairly significant 
I wonder if a 32 mil base is gonna sit in this doorway. I don't think it is. I think a 25 is, I don't think a 32 is. No, there's no way, totally overlaps it. You're not fitting a, 30, a 32 in that doorway. And I mean, a 25 will just, just fit inside. So something to consider, your 32s don't appear to actually be able to go through the small doors. I don't know what that means rules is written. I think that means the big guys can't actually fit, which is pretty significant considering half the guys in this box set are on 32 mil bases. Uh, let's see how we do for this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure your base has to fit in Necromunda. There's no like moving through gaps rules. Where if a gap is at least an inch, you can move through it. I don't know. I actually don't know. I'd have to look it up. But as 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 we as I eyeball this, and I'm pretty sure when I put it together, I'm gonna be right. The 32s don't fit in between. Only the 25s do. And that could cut off a significant chunk of the board unless you just house roll, which is what I would do. Um, and then I need another base plate. So that's two sides, one small base plate, one large base plate. And I'll throw a console on one of them so that we can have some doors that lock. Because you got the codes to get through. And again, these are pretty simple builds. I think the screens are all cracked on these two. It reminds me of um, whatever the plan is from Alien 3 where they have lots of technology, but nothing really works. <laughs> That's maybe the best worst Necromunda movie. It's definitely the worst of the first three Alien movies. Although I actually have a soft spot for it because I love David Fincher. Um, but maybe the best Necromunda terrain movie currently available to watch if you want some inspiration. And again, I should be doing this at the back of the blade just for safety's sake, but I'm not. And lots of connection points to clean off there. There's one side two sides and again do not glue the doors in so they can be removed the connections look fairly robust here for putting all this together and it's just this oh geez another piece of piece of plastic in there a little tabby that's gonna sit in one of these and i should have probably cleaned this before i put glue on that piece of ash what is wrong with you Mm. Oh, the, the, the Tamiya model smells my nose run. My apologies. Give me the sniffles because of the solvent smell. Uh, it's going to go in there. Oh, weird. It doesn't sit quite flush. That's super weird. If you look, there's like a lift. It like lifts up slightly. What is up with that? Uh, did I do this wrong somehow? No. No, that's that's the other side there. Or are these all from the same side? Oh, that's why. So these need to, I need to get one from the other end. I should have actually been looking at the numbers. I just eyeballed it. It's because they basically got four of the same column on one side, four on the other. So I clipped off two of these prematurely. That's okay. I should have clipped clip off two other ones. But yeah, it's weirdly lifted up. The indent's not quite deep enough which is strange. You wouldn't think they'd make that mistake. Um, unless there's like a reason for that. I don't think so. That's super weird. Well, let's clean some flash here. Put these suckers together. Like, unless I put that in wrong, which I don't think I have. It's, but it's raised, like it's raised a significant amount. Like if you look at that, that's the offset. That's pretty high. And I mean, it's hard to mess this up because it's just, yeah, two of the same. No, that appears to be correct. There's like a little offset here. It's just lifted slightly as if the divot here either wasn't thick enough or something, but that's not, that's, that's the way she goes. It's just seen it sit like that and then the door drops in. And the reason this elevation appears to be right is that there's a, a layer of like connectors you can see here on the edge. So when you put it in between two of these columns, those bits kind of like snap in and hold a little bit snug. Um, but yeah, no, it's raised up just slightly for some reason. Not really sure why. Uh, just slightly offset. We'll see if the big one's the same way, but there's your door basically sitting in there and then you can lift that out and replace it as needed for having your doors open and close. I'm just gonna put the little console on there just to give it a little bit of detail. But I don't really know the reasoning for that. It doesn't appear to be that way in the picture either. 
If I look at the picture, the picture has it flush with the ground. Now this one doesn't though. That one looks like it is though. I don't know. I don't know if that was intentional or uh, just a, a like a slight scale issue or an oops. But it seems odd because it makes it so that that if you put any pressure on here, it's pushing down on this little like that's the only join there is is those two little like tongues in those gears. I'm gonna throw a little bit extra glue in there and leave that up just to try and make it weld a little bit more and then leave the door in while it dries because the door is going to keep it from drawing it the wrong shape. I'll put it upside down and let it dry like that. Hopefully that welds nice and tight and then that won't break going forward. But yeah, no, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty like small connecting point to have be where all the weight sits on this. So I don't know. And I guess this sits here on an edge. Just try for that a second. Does it sit like that on an angle? Yeah, there it goes. She goes in that little divot right there. So that little divot's where your console goes. That can just sit to one side. And oh, I forgot a piece of flash. Okay, I'm gonna leave the door in while this dries just to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't sit. Cause like normally I would just sit it flat, but the problem is the weight of these is just gonna push down and it's gonna warp it slightly. So I'm gonna hang it upside down on the door and that should keep it drying in the, the proper shape. And we'll do a big one. I thought this was gonna be way simpler than it ended up being. <laughs> do a big one real fast and see if it's the same. If that depth keeps the edges kind of like lifted a little bit for some reason. I don't know what the reasoning for that would be. You want it to be flush with the ground just so it doesn't warp. Especially considering you're making a hollow join here. You'd want this to be as strong as possible. And after after the great, like how strong these are with the tongue groove on the inside, it's odd that this is not reinforced in some way or that this just doesn't extend further underneath the doorway. But nope, I guess not. Like that. And then I'm probably gonna have to find another one of these. Did I cut the right one? So where I changed them. Is it you? No, it's not you. Which one of you am I looking for? Not that one, I'll have to cut one more because I didn't get the right one. Yeah, no, it's still lifted. Still up in the air a little bit. And like, it doesn't go inside either. Nope, doesn't do that. I thought maybe I glued it on wrong, but nope. That appears to be how it goes. Sits in like that, raised up a little bit. And it, I mean, it sounds, and it sounds like me being a little bit finicky about, about this small detail of it being lifted like that. But I mean, this is a, it's a triple A product, right? Like a <laughs> triple A company, triple A product. You, you, it's just odd that that's that is offset as much as it is. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's the kind of thing you're designing on a computer, right? So you'd, you'd make the indent the same size as the height of it, unless they couldn't for some reason. I'm um, looking for another one of you, because I clipped the wrong ones, because I wasn't paying attention to numbers. Actually, just I was because I was clipping fast and I clipped all, all down one side. You two will be for later. And clean one more of these. Oh, oh, I can't really test until it's dry. I wanted to see if that 32 mil base would fit through there, but I'll test when it's good and dry. So I'm not flipping it over and letting that, that cement come out. Give this a clean, give this a clean. And we'll do much the same thing. Just hang it upside down on the door frame. Get that on is. When you're doing long mold lines like that, using the back of the blade actually is easier than using the front of the blade because you're not in peril of like going too fast and then like clipping the end of your thumb off, especially when your blade is this sharp. Although a sharp blade is way safer than a dull blade. Give that a good scrape. Scrape this side. And you can see here, if you have a, a like a hard edge on the back of your knife blade, it is, it'll just carve mold lines right off, but without taking off too much of the model too. It's a safer way of, it protects actually the detail of the model. All right, let's see if we can do this the same. It's a little bit in the divot here. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit, just bead the edge. So this hopefully dries nice. Yeah, there's not a lot of like contact there. So you wanna make sure you get some glue all along the side. Get the other one and then put, the, put it on the door. Yeah, it's the same way. There's just a weird amount of like gap. I don't know why. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And then I'll hang it upside down on the door frame here. 
let that dry. Just so it holds the right shape. But you can see it here too that it's got this like divoting on the outside so that if you did want to glue your zone mortalis together, I guess you could, but you're going to obviously leave these pieces separate. How dry are you? Yep, 25 fits perfectly. The 32 will not go. Does not go by a significant amount. So I don't actually remember if doors just get an exception for base size, but I'm pretty sure if you don't fit, you don't fit. We'll see. So there we go. Doors are done. Finish the doors. Hooray. That was, I didn't expect to have that many comments about that, but there we go. And we're into some wall construction. All right, so on the wall frame here, we've got some, again, don't glue the tops and the bottoms, it says. Just pick some walls and go to town. Go crazy. Go crazy with your walls. So we've got, oh, this is see, this is ceiling bits? Oh, this is ceiling bits. This isn't walls. I need to grab a different frame. I grabbed the wrong frame. This is all the top pieces. These are extra top pieces. And so are those. I'm grabbing the frame. Okay, here we go. These are the these are the dreads I was looking for. This is the set of like, oh, this is interchangeable, which is these guys right here. So again, I'm looking for a top plate. Uh, and I think that is actually these pieces right here in the middle. So let's clip one out. Just so we can see how all this goes together. I think you're dry enough. I can turn you over now and put you next to him. And grab some appropriate pieces of wall. So I think too long, too short is what we're looking for here. Morse code style, SOS. And that'll give us one wall section just so we can see how it goes together. These are super simple. You're basically just building a frame and the tops can go on it or not, but it does weirdly say don't glue them. And you don't, you only get three tops here for uh, one, two, so that's one, to oh it's just three wall sections so yeah i guess you would glue them eventually i don't know why it says not to glue them i guess it's just so that the stairs and the accessories can go on top would be the reasoning why and this is all said and done so we can drop on and off but the, the idea to leave them hollow i guess i need one more short and one more long and so let's see you get three wall sections on this frame and you get two of these frames three of these frames Eight pillars, three wall sections. Yeah, one more. And it's all super easy to build. Like this stuff is not complicated to put together, but pretty detail rich. And the amount that you get should give you like a pretty, pretty good like configuration of different stuff. These look like they're not that wide. They're about two and a half inches, maybe two inches wide. Yeah, the same width as us. Nope, a little bit less. Same width as the doors. That's what it is. That makes sense. So this looks like three inches. This looks like two and change. Because it's going to want to add up to 12 overall, right? That looks like about four. This needs to be fairly consistent in its measurements so that it can appropriately fill the mat. Because the mat has like specific spots for things to go. And then you kind of build it from there. So that your zone mortalis is fairly, you know, walls going off into space, basically. <laughs> it's not like, it's not got like, um, uh, just kind of like nowhere builds that you can do. Everything fits a certain template size. Or STC in 40K terms. Right, get this cleaned off. And yeah, it's just four pieces in a lid, basically. In a lid you don't glue down. But it looks like it's got the same tongue and groove as the pillars did which means it should be pretty robust glued together even without a top piece holding it on because usually it's the top and bottom pieces that give us some structural like strength but with that tongue and groove system and using a using a welding agent like a tamiya glue it should be strong it should be really tough when it's when it's all said and done because it should basically just melt it all into one piece of plastic okay so yes there's the tongue and groove in there on the edge then you put that on a big piece which will go like Oops, sit, sit down like that. Oh yeah, this is kind of like the old, old, old um, city fight train, city death buildings. They were similarly like built, like structurally, like Lego to go together. Fairly, fairly consistently. And like, I like that all the pieces are kind of universal. So you can just grab any walls you want and bang them together into a, 
a chunk, a section. Another big wall on the outside, just being careful not to get too much glow on the top there so I can drop the top piece in. Yeah, it just goes on like that. I may just end up gluing these top pieces in because I'm not going to worry about messing around with like ultimate configuration. I'm more concerned about having it be simple. And yeah, that would go on the outside and again that links up perfectly with those walls and doors. And there you go. So I mean this is uh, one short wall section, two pillars. That's a, that's a pretty cool corner piece. You put that on one of those tiles. That would fill up one of those 12 by 12 tiles. And they're pretty, pretty impressive amount of scatter terrain. And what else is in here? I think that's it. I think we're on to building dudes. Yeah, let's build some dudes. So yeah, so there you go. So you see you drop the pillars down onto these like uh, little graded sections and then you build the walls out around it is the idea it looks like. Then you add your doors, your four doors, and then you add your stairs and gantries and stuff. And that will give you a nice two by two. Floors can be placed on top of the walls. Oh, yay. Oh, I see. Okay, so you can connect them with almost like bridges and stuff. Although, again, reading through the terrain rules, if you look at my review, I'm not really super sure how that relates to the 2D-ness of Zone Mortalis, where like walls are infinitely high and block line of sight, so and they're passable. I'm not super sure how that works. I'm, maybe there's something I missed in there. And then place all your, yeah, your, your columns and your pipes and stuff afterwards. Cool. All right, so we got some terrain. Let's build some, we want to do some, start with some corpse grinders. They're the newest, the newest hotness. So let's do them first. Jump in and build one of those big, big brawler boys. And these guys have literally no guns. Only the juvies carry guns. Everybody else carries cannibal equipment because these dudes are straight cannibals. They just eat everything because they're all starving to death. And actually everybody becomes a cannibal later in the campaign, which is just madness. Um, but you mix 32s. I'm going to build just one of the 32 mil guys. And to grab some instructions for him. What do we got here? Show me some cannibal cult. Uh, I like to do with the big heavy blades. The hand crimson. Let's do him. Because the heavy chain blades are bananas good. So it's 35 and 36, which is 35 right here. Like, it's not a lot. Of, it's like six pieces for this dude. 35, 36 for his chest piece. I think he's standing on a pile of gore. Man, this is not, this is, this is a not for the faint of heart, fairly adult box set. Like if my parents bought me this when I was a kid and then 37, 38 for the big chain blades and they were like, so explain the story of Necromunda me. I was like, well, it's basically about a society that descends into cannibalism and murder. They'd be like, what did we just buy you? Um, so this color you're joining Ash, uh, you're not, uh, you're not joining us anymore. It's a pretty brave, like dark. I'm not, I'm surprised like in the old days. This is the kind of box that would have totally had a parental advisory on it. So we're looking at 4039 for the head. 4039. Um, where are you? I love this guy, Skorkarag, with his like weird like like death mask. Uh, 4039. That is the big weird skull head. Where is it? 4039. Oh, there's 40. It's because it's backwards. I couldn't see the face. And then 39 for the skull plate because he's a demon infused murder machine and boy how do these guys have murder machines they get like more cannibally as they go on i love that they're just like standing on top of piles of gore so yeah so it's just a front plate basically that goes into the back but then the arms are fairly loose so you can do some customization here if you want to chop these up it's reminiscent a little bit of the um the way the gene stealer cultists go together mm. all right and then the chest piece. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty jazzed to paint these guys. They're pretty rad. Like, they're just like, they're so metal. <laughs> like, they look like they should be in Metalocalypse. They should be, they should be members of Death Clock's, like, fan base or their, like, servant cast or whatever. Making the whole world metal. All right, that's done. A piece of flash on there and get some of those on his feeties. And then throw him down on a base plate. And then I just need to clean his arms and his face. Yeah, these are pretty, these are pretty simple builds, but, and you're basically getting through, like this frame is, is in there three times. So it's the same frame three times, and you just mix and match to make them look different. And it looks like you've got four, or sorry, three or four different builds for the, um, the, the, the hero class, like your champions and your gangers. Because your gangers are all the guys on 32s as well. Only your juvies, like you get two little juvie guys, you get two of them on the basic, uh, the basic frame it looks like 
I might have to, I'm going to check before I build them because I might not be right about that. But I'm pretty sure your gangers are all on 32s as well. Because they can't have, they can't have guns. They can only have melee weapons and only the little guys get guns. So I'm pretty sure it's just the initiatives that get guns or the initiatives rather. And yeah, your heavy chain blades, your heavy chain cleavers, sorry. Because this is all just the, the stuff they use to chop up the bodies in the corpse guild to make the food that everyone on Necromunda eats. That's the secret. Uh, Solid Green's made from people. And these are just the dudes that have gone insane from chopping up all the people that everybody eats. Like all the like hamburgers you eat, yeah, it's people. All the chicken burgers you eat, all your Chick-fil-A, it's made from people. They're just breaking down everybody into base protein and then uh, like vat growing that protein back into something that tastes different. It's full solid green. So cleaning off our little bits here. Not too much flash, they're pretty clean. I mean, they're brand new molds, so they should be clean. There shouldn't be too much flash on a mold like this. No shifting from overuse. We'll throw his arms on and he's done. Yeah, these, these dudes go together pretty quick. Ah, uh, it's disappointing though. You can't really repose the arms because they're not on flat hinges. They are straight up divoted so that you can only build them one way. That's a bit disappointing. Couldn't make it a flat joint, huh? Couldn't just make it. I guess that's that was sacrificed for like his muscle striation detail, which whatever, I can live with that, but you can always chop them up. Fill with some putty, not a big deal. And there he is, all done. Got his, got his sweet chain cleavers, ready to go lead some dudes to, to, to more cannibalism. <laughs> Let's build Enforcer. All right, let's build one of these sweet, sweet subjugators. So this is uh, a dude with a riot shield and a shotgun, which is pretty awesome. It's not a shotgun, actually. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a light grenade launcher. So which one do I like the look of? I'm just gonna follow the instructions on one of them. I like you. I like you, subjugator 0791. So I'm looking for, because they're all the same, basically. Eights, are the body literally all the same? They are for these two. Okay, I gotcha. So eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Uh, five, so it's actually three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's find three. So there's three, it looks like a shoulder piece. These are far more pieces than the corpse dudes, than the corpse grinders. Three, generally speaking, they're all the same places on the frame though, which is nice. Four, like close together. Five, Six, seven, eight. And then six is right there. There's a little cod piece. Seven's right there. Leg number one and leg number two. And I like to, I generally like to clip out like a series and then get them glued and then just do the next series. And that means that I can like clean a batch and while the dude's drying, I can clip out the next batch because this is his. Oh, it's his gorget. It's like his, um, his like neck piece here, which sits in between these two chest pieces. And the flash is not too bad. It's not great. There's going to be a seam because he has a front and back panel to go together, which is never, you know, you got to fill it if you're going to actually make it go away completely. It's never perfect, but you don't typically look at it from the side anyway, so you're probably not going to notice it. And you can always fill it with a little extra polystyrene cement too, and it'll kind of melt everything together. And uh, there's the back and the front, and I'm looking to just get that glued while I clean everything else. Bit of glue in there, bit of glue in there to hold that neck piece in. Uh, I'm holding the front of the back, I'm holding the back, which means the neck piece goes like this. Get in there, neck piece, good job. And the front goes down. We just sandwich that together. Oh, and they were smart with it too. They hid some of the seams by kind of wrapping the plates over top. And let's just put a little bit of glue over top of these shoulder plates and it should should sink in and fill in the seams that are on top of that, hopefully. And give it a good squeeze. Let that dry. I'm gonna do his little leggies and his, oh, did I clean that already? Nope, no I didn't. They're on the sides. And this cod piece, and we'll just get this dry in. So yeah, it looks like the sergeant and this guy, and uh, 0791 have the same torso and legs. So normally what I would do is I would, if I was just production lining these, I would go grab both of them and just get them going at the same time so they're all melting and drying and curing at the same time. 
All right, you're done. Let's stick your legs in. Try not to touch those shoulder pads. And the legs just kind of like go up underneath the, the skirt there. Uh, number one and number two. So the number one goes like that. Number two goes like this. And oh, it's actually not a cod piece. It's his butt plate. Is what it actually is. It goes on his butt on there. And oh, as an idiot, I touched that. I should I should really just put that on after I put him on the base. But such is life when you're freestyling things. That can sit like this on the back. There we go. Get his toes a little polystyrene. And just throw him on a base. And let that sucker dry. While I'm on cleaning the next thing. Alright, next up. So now I'm down to him, which means I'm looking for uh 11 sorry 10 11 sorry, is there nine yeah so it's 9 10 11 12 1 2 and then 44 and 50. let's find one and two first it's probably easy. there it is it's his head one and oh actually one and two is over and over again all the heads are the same it's like space brain heads one and two and then 9 10 11 12. Uh, there's 12 because all the 12s are shields because the shields are all the same and i like the shields don't have arms attached either so if I wanted to back sling a shield, I could, because there's like an arm to cut off. And I'm looking for 9, 10, 11. 9, 10, 11, there's 10. Which means 9 should be nearby, there's 9. 9, 10, and I bet this is actually here a bunch of times because there's three shields, so there's probably three of these arms. 10, and then 11. Oh, 11A, 11B, I'm looking for just 11. 11A, 11B, I just want a regular 11. Just give me a, just doesn't say 11A or 11B. Oh, I'm blind, I hate this part, finding the parts. I love that it's numbered now, cause like, it's so much easier than it used to be, trying to find parts. But at the same time, I hate that it's numbered. I think it's actually supposed to be 11A. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be 11A. It didn't give me an A or B code there. Oh, I see, B is actually just the other half of piece 11, okay. Well, I'm glad I was confused by that. Yeah, 11B is actually this this clip that you're supposed to put onto 11A, which is the other half of the grenade launcher. So let's clean that and put it together before I lose this dinky tiny little piece of grenades, which I would absolutely do. I like that it's basically a pistol-sized grenade launcher. It's like a it's like a grenade revolver that fires like fracking crack grenades. It's it's the closest they could come to doing a um, a lawgiver from Judge Dredd, because that's kind of what this is. It's a lawgiver. It's just a bunch of different like like round styles out of this like weird pistol. I'm gonna make them all like lawgivers because I'd be wrong not to, and anyone that doesn't would be wrong not to. Let's do your head, because that's also two parts, and Thinky Small, which I don't want to lose. See what I wish they'd done, so the, head, the helmets are open like this. I wish they just made a front plate that wasn't the mask that was just like a bare face. So you could have them with like the visor off, but still wearing the helmet. Cause it's either bare head or helmet in this case. There's no one wearing like the front of their helmet with like their mask down. And that would have been even more Judge Dredd. Maybe Forge will do that and do like an accessory where it's this front plate. Cause like clearly it's there that you could have done it. Like the front plate is basically just like separate. And I'm gonna glue it on right now. I didn't, I didn't need to have it be a face or but like it, it could have been very easily and that can dry and then we're just cleaning off these this is 11 this is the other half of the gun arm and that's the shield arm and then the 44 and 50 are looks like his shock baton and his little like um ammo packs they're all gonna go together so that looks like that goes there and then you sit on here i love how chunky these guys are they're awesome ah Drop things. The problem is when you drop things uh, into a pile of like <laughs> cut off flash that's covered in wet glue, you don't know what's going to come back. Mm, you should sit like this. There we go. It's a little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Let you dry for a minute and then we'll clean up this shield. Do I leave the shield off to paint them? I mean, I probably should, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I probably should to get to every detail, but then the part of me that's not patient is just going to say no. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to glue it on and I'm going to paint it. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going just gonna to wing it. Just going to freestyle it. No, I will leave it off. I can't. I can't do it. I can't leave it on. I can't do it by itself. 
And this arm's just gonna go straight in the body. Get under there. Ready to throw that shield on later. You can just get right in there too. Mr. Pistol Arm. We'll go on that. That's gonna sit underneath as well. Ready to ready to spend so much justice. Dude's ready to give it all the justice. Alright. And then the head. That's what I head on to. I'll get those music bags. And throw them in. Oh, ready for justice. So ready for justice. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just the, I think it's supposed to be the shock grenade, or the shock baton 50. Because there's big shock batons and little shock batons. Little shock batons, just like a, maybe it's a grenade. 50, 50, 50. Where are you? There's 44. Yeah. Or it's, maybe it's a handcuff. I don't know. I it's a shock baton. I think it's just like, a, it's like an asp. Like it like, it like, like kind of, um, extends when he needs it. But I could be wrong. Oh, it goes on his chest. This guy's rocking. This guy's rocking his ammo on his chest where, you know, if he gets shot, it'll explode. That's smart. <laughs> Let's just wear these ammo pouches on my chest. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you guys in Enforcer Scroll learned all the, all the good tricks. Well, I guess we'll just follow the instructions. And then, um, that little grenade-y, aspy thing's gonna go down there. That was hip. Yeah, it's either, I think, I think it's a shock baton. I think a shock baton is just supposed to extend out of that. And then that shit will just clip on afterwards. Pretty rad. I like it. Cool. We'll let him dry. And there we go. So there's our first look at assembling all the stuff from Dark Uprising. Um, the Nightmare Cannibal Murder expansion for Necromunda. Adding like the crazy, uh, the crazy Corpse Grinder cult. And of course more enforcers. So... Pretty jazzed about this. You can see me and Chris. He's going to paint up the Corpse Grinders, and I'm going to paint up the um, Palantine Enforcers. And we're going to run through the campaign from the book. It's going to be super fun. And you can stay tuned to that on uh, on his channel and mine coming forward. We're, I think we're, we're one game away from finished from our first cycle for Necromunda. So we're ready for something new, and this is perfect timing. Um, and then check out on the paint table next week for more painting stuff on this when the box comes out. And you can um, I might do a painting guide. Tell me below in the comments if you want me to do a painting guide. I did a painting guide for the... Um, the terrain for um, Warcry that people really liked. Just a quick and dirty way of doing it. I'll probably do one for these bulkheads too. Uh, and we can we can check that out. So if you want that, just tell me in the comments and I'll try and work on that next week. Uh, and we'll see you for more of this next week on the paint table. So big thanks for watching. And um, this, uh, this episode of Let's Make, of course, uh, just kind of highlighting what you can do with the Dark Uprising box. It's a pretty simple box. It's kind of Lego bricks. They just all kind of go together. Um, and hopefully this will help some people that are, that are making up their minds if they want to get it or not. So anyway, uh, we'll see you next time for more of this. Till then, I'm Ash. How are you? I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.